problem number 51 from chapter 10. In this problem, we have a pulley here for the mass big M and a little box here for the mass little m. And the values are given right here. This object starts at a distance of 6 meters above the ground, and uh, it falls and it causes the pulley to spin and fall down. The first part asks us to calculate what the tension in this rope is, then we need to find the acceleration of the system, and then we also need to find uh, what the speed is when the object gets down to the bottom. So for part A, well, the first thing that we need to do is to uh, look at this problem and uh, identify the forces that we have on this by drawing a free body diagram. So for the little mass m right here, we're going to have two forces. There's going to be a tension that points in this direction. There's going to be a weight that points in that direction. For this object here, because it's a, a rigid object, I'm going to draw the object itself like this. There's only one force on it, and that's the tension, which is coming down in this direction here created by the fact that this object is pulling down. That's going to cause this to rotate. So it's an angular acceleration we're going to call alpha. Looking at just this one here, we can apply Newton's second law to this free body diagram here. We can say that uh, the net force on this object has to be equal to the mass. This is little m because we're talking about the box here, times a. The net force is going to be mg minus t. mg is positive here because the direction of the acceleration is down this object right here, because it's a rigid object that's rotating, we can apply this type of analysis to it. We can say the net torque that's created by that right there, remembering that this right here is a distance r, making a right angle right here. The net torque there should be equal to i times alpha, because this is a rigid object here, we can say that the moment of inertia of this object is equal to, it's a solid disk basically, so it's moment of inertia, if you look it up into one of those tables, you'll get one half mr squared. So the net torque here is just the torque due to T uh, about the axis right here. That's the axis. The distance to the axis is R. So it's T times R times the sine of the angle between the two of them, but the angle is 90. So it's just TR. Times alpha. The uh, R here cancels out with the R there. For this, we have two different uh, equations, and we have three variables, T, A, and alpha. We need to eliminate one of them. What we know for sure is that the rate at which the rope is coming off here, the rate at which the rope is going down, is the same as uh, the rate at which the mass is going down. That is to say, the acceleration of the mass down this way is the same as the tangential acceleration of a point on the edge of the wheel here. And if that's the case, then we can say that uh, this acceleration is related to that alpha through this equation here. means that r times alpha here is just actually a. Take this equation here, add it to this equation. Tensions cancel. We get little mg equals little m plus one half mean a, just like that. And then we get to divide, oops, We can divide this over to this side to get that the acceleration of the system is little m over little m plus one half big M times gravity. And if you calculate this, plugging in the values of 5.1, 5.1, and 3.0, uh, you get that the acceleration is 7.57. Actually, the solution to part B. So that's part B. For part A, we actually have to solve for the tension here. And that would just be about plugging the A into here, and what we would get plugging into M is 11.4. For part C, they want us to calculate what the velocity of the object is right here. And in order to do that, we can note that we see that the initial velocity of the box as it falls is zero. The acceleration is 7.57. And the change in uh, height, or whatever, you want to call the change in y, I guess, is equal to 6. This is taking down to be positive because everything is negative in this case, by the way. Uh, then we want to find what Vf is. We can use this equation. Okay. 
kinematic equation where I've taken the square root to the left side. Uh, this part's zero, so we get that dF is equal to the square root of two times our acceleration times the change in y, which is six. We're going to get 9.53, I think. The next step is to solve this using energy and verify that we get the same thing. So in order to do that, we're going to say that uh, the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy equals the final kinetic plus the final energy. So the initial point that it starts at here, we're going to say that the initial height is equal to 6. We're going to call this down here the final height equal to zero, which means that our final potential energy is going to be zero. That also means, uh, we, we also know that it starts from rest, which means the kinetic energy initially is zero. So we have uh, this expression here. The initial potential energy is just going to be given by the potential energy of that block right there, the smaller block. So it's going to be mgh. The final kinetic energy, there's two different pieces of that. One of them is the fact that once this object gets down to here, it's going to be moving down with some velocity, we'll call it the dF. Plus, this object here is going to be rotating with an angular speed, so we're going to say that it has rotational kinetic energy, which is equal to 1 half i omega squared, which is constant. Okay. Now what we need to do is to solve this for v, and uh, in order to do that we need to know something about omega, just as much as a equals r alpha, it's also the case that v is related to omega like this. So we can replace the omega here with the over r. I was one half omega is going to become v squared over r squared, right? Because omega is v over r, we have to square it. That makes this r squared cancel here and here, so we get. And if you calculate this, you'll get the same thing. 